And we are back for Game of Thrones Season 8 Fixed, continuing on my fan fiction of what I would have done for Season 8. With Episode 5, I would open with Danny's army marching over the frozen empty battlefield where the Golden Company fell. Danny would look up and see the unmanned scorpions and smile with satisfaction. Tyrion would then ride up. The scouts report that the army of the dead is still two days ahead on the King's Road. They see no dragon in the air. Good. It seems the Golden Company was good for something. And Jon Snow, it seems, Tyrion would say. Daenerys would give him a glare. Any sign of him? Trails show that survivors fled in all directions. He could be among them. What lies ahead? The Riverlands. Long leagues of flat land. It's fast going. Then the Ruby Ford. The Ruby Ford. Viserys told me stories. Yes, it's the crossing of the Trident, where your brother Rhaegar fell. Rubies flew from his breastplate. Veil vale reinforcements are nearby at salt pans. It may be a good place to strike the Night King. The army would be trapped between us and the river. If the swamps didn't stop the army, I doubt the ford will. No, we will let the dead cross. Unmolested. My queen, may I ask, what is our plan? We do plan on defeating the army of the dead before they reach King's Landing, no? If they take the city, half a million will perish, and their forces will be half a million stronger. If you must know, I do have a plan. The Night King and his dragon surprised us at Winterfell. Darkness helped him, but overall, I'm better in the air. I have more experience. And now he has no flying dragon at all, it seems. Then why haven't we attacked? Who would take out Cersei's scorpions, then? They are my one vulnerability. You are going to let King's Landing perish because of some giant crossbows? I'm not going to let the people die. I'm their savior. I want people to see that. You think that Vale army loves me? Or the Reachers, the Stormlanders, the Dornish? They all conspire against me. I need to win them over, like I did the Miranese and the Dothraki and the Unsullied. I need to make them love me. Once the army of the dead breaches the walls, the Lannister forces will retreat into the inner fortifications, away from the Scorpions. The Night King will be distracted by battle, and I will have my window to defeat him and Cersei all at once. I will be their hero. Daenerys looks to the sky as her dragon flies overhead, roaring. Much smaller, a raven is up there as well. We follow the raven as it flies over leagues and leagues of snowy forest. There, on the ground, we see Jon Snow, hiking through the snow alone. The raven flies lower and caws. Jon Snow stops and looks up. We are back with Bran, riding with Brienne and Danny's army. His eyes are white. Still, Bran speaks. Jon. Jon, come back. Jon stares at the raven, listening to it caw. Please, Jon. Come back. The raven circles him. Suddenly, Bran is back in time. He stands next to John's corpse on a table after his stabbing. John, come back. John awakens violently, then Bran awakens, startled in the present. What is it? Brienne asks, worried. John Snow, Bran says. I saw him. I told him to return. We were then cut to south of King's Landing with Davos Gendry and the Stormwinder army. The Blackwater River sits between them and the city. Here I am, Davos would say. Back here again. Home at King's Landing. The Blackwater. Out in that bay is where Stannis and I failed to take the city. Where my son, Mathos, died. Where the mother saw fit to spare me and spit me out on some rock. You were brought back for a reason. Like Beric. That's what people tell me. Sometimes I think the mother brought me back just to torture me. Lord Gendry, a rider would say. Outriders have spotted Dornish men marching up the King's Road. Lord Varys was successful, it seems. And there are Reach Lords upriver. It's going to be a crowded river bank. Send an emissary to the Reachers. We need to be in step with them. Send someone to the Dornishmen as well. I have never known a Dornishman to be in step with anyone, Davos would mumble. And then we would cut to Cersei. She does not look well. Sweaty, a bit gray. Kyburn enters. Your Grace, the Greyjoy fleet has returned to us. You're on left White Harbor without my leave? It appears to be the case his sail was seen amongst the fleet. Though it is quite fortuitous, our scouts report that armies are amassing on the south side of the Blackwater. Whose armies? Reinforcements or foes? Upriver flies banners from the Reach, your grace. Mostly Tarly and Fossaway. Tarly, Cersei says. Lord Randall's house, loyal to the crown. Who else? 
Downriver, the army has the banner of Storm's End, and there are reports that an army from Sunspear is marching north to join them. Storm's End? Who has left Castellan there? I believe Stannis left a Gilbert Faring. Uncertain loyalty. And Sunspear? Who can ever say who a Dornishman supports? Do not let anyone near the city gates. Have the Greyjoy fleet sail upriver, ferry only our allies over. Just the Reachers. I should remind you that the Army of the Dead has defeated the Golden Company. Reports from the Twins say that the Horde continues its march down the King's Road, with Daenerys behind it. Who is to say when they will be outside of our city walls? Cersei would think on that. Ferry over only the Stormlanders and the Dornishmen. We would then jump to the Hound and Arya, chained aboard Euron's ship. The Hound is the first to break the silence. This might have not been the smartest idea. I figure we may die here. King Krakenkunt doesn't seem too sane. It's as good as any place to die, Arya would say. I have no regrets. I have regrets. A million of them. Like killing Micah. I taking the life of your butcher's boy was bad. But it's not my worst. My worst was you. What? Arya would look offended. Made you into me. Made you worse than me. I heard about what happened at the Twins. I know that was you. You think those Freys don't have wives, sons, and daughters? Those that want vengeance just as much as you? How many more yous did you create with your little list? How many will be even worse? Violence is a disease, the Hound would say. You don't cure a disease by spreading it to more people. I'm almost finished. Then I can... What? Go back home? There's no going back. You lied to your beloved big brother. Dornish acrobats. Eventually they'll all learn the truth. And sooner or later, some fray spawn is going to come looking for you. Or your family. Nah, you can never go back to the way it was. Arya would be silent. But just because you can't go back to Winterfell doesn't mean you can't come back from wherever you are. Start anew. If we survive all this, we could... We? You. You could go across the Narrow Sea. Head south. Head west of Westeros. Ha! The hound would laugh. If you're eager to die, the door would open. Euron would enter, holding the mask of Jaime's face and the golden hand. Ingenious work this is, Euron would say, holding up the mask. I couldn't get it to fit me. How on earth did you craft such a thing? Arya would stay silent. Trade secret, I imagine. Fine. You can keep that with you and your guild. However, it is no secret what you were planning. An assassin wearing the face of Jaime Lannister. Daenerys wants to kill the Queen. Try to end this war. I'm not Daenerys's, Arya would say. Good. I'm not Cersei's, Euron would reply. It won't work, you know, killing her. I've seen what's coming. Fire. So much fire. The visions were clear. Arya and the Hound would look at each other. You know the future, Arya asks. How? I have my trade secrets, too. If the future is set... Arya would say. What's the point of visions? Why bother telling people what will happen? Euron would look puzzled, as if the answer is obvious. So we can heed the warning. Prepare for what comes after. The hound shakes his head. Bugger your visions, he would say. A red priest made me look into flames and told me I was going to help defeat the dead. Well, it didn't happen. We went north of the wall and ended up giving the fuckers a dragon instead. This would catch Euron's attention. What you saw aided them. Aye, the hound would say. Some mountain and some dead men. Should have ignored it. Would have all turned out better. Serves me right for listening to a drunk. Interesting, Euron would sit. If destiny needs mortal assistance, your pathetic mortal assistance, then maybe it's not set in stone. He would stand and walk over to Arya. I was going to hand you over to Cersei, but now... I think I need a change of plans. Men? Some ironborn would enter. Take this one to King's Landing and let her go. Euron would hand her the mask and the golden hand. You can kill the queen, but then you need to kill the queen. They leave. Euron would turn to the hound. What to do with you? Tell me, how many visions have you had? Just the one. Euron produces a flask of Shade of the Evening. I think that will change today. We then jump back to Danny's army. Riders at the front of the column see a man emerge from the woods. It's John.
Riders surround him first. Danny rides up with a stern look on her face. John frowns, expecting punishment. Danny dismounts, walks over to John, and embraces him. I'm sorry, she whispers. I thought I had lost you. John doesn't react for a few long moments, but finally lifts his arms and embraces her in return. He would be given a horse and would join the march. Sam and Bran would ride alongside him. I saw you walking, Bran would say, from the raven's eyes. Where were you going? I don't know, John would say. Away from here. I thought our queen was going to behead me. Maybe to salt pans to the Vale forces. Did you hear me? Bran asks. Is that why you came back? John gives Bran an odd look. I didn't hear anything. I just changed my mind. They would ride for a while, and then Bran would say, I know why we're at war now. Why? Sam would ask. There was an armistice, Bran says, and we broke it. I, the dragon glass you found at the fist, taking little Sam. But before that, it was Mance Raider. Mance? Sam would ask. How? The White Walkers are men. Changed, twisted, but men, and their sons are our sons. Mance wanted to take the wildlings south of the wall. All of them. No more children, John would say. They would ride for a bit more before Sam would speak up. Good, he would say. Mance did the right thing. If there was a pact, it was built on the blood of the innocent. How many thousands of children do you suppose we've given them over the centuries? John is thoughtful for a bit. How many thousands did we lose at Winterfell? Next, we cut to a Greyjoy ship landing at the shore of the Blackwater. Davos and Gendry look on with Stormlander soldiers around them. A bit to their right is Simon Fossaway with his army, Tarly, and Fossaway banners flying. And to Davos and Gendry's left is the Prince of Dorne and Varys, Dornish spearmen around them. The gangplank to the Greyjoy ship is lowered and the captain begins walking down. At first, we only see the feet, and then the camera pans up to reveal that the captain is Yara. It is the other Greyjoy fleet that has arrived at King's Landing. Theon follows Yara down the plank, and after Theon, the bridge priestess. Yara would speak first. The command coming from the Red Keep is for our fleet to ferry over the Stormlanders and the Dornish, but not the Reachers. This makes me wonder which of you Cersei Lannister thinks are allies, and which ones she wants to die at the hands of the dead. We are no allies of Cersei, Gendry would say. Dorne, as always, stands alone, says the Prince of Dorne. The Reach is well, says Fossaway. You know what's coming on the other side of the river, Theon would ask. Aye, Gendry would say. We are here to fight for the living. Then perhaps we each stand alone, together. Majestic music would start playing. Eight thousand years ago, our ancestors stood against the army of the dead, and today we do the same. At the top of the gangplank, Melisandre would appear and begin walking down as Theon speaks. Davos' face would go cold, his anger clearly building. Our plan is this, Yara would pick up where Theon left off. Half of our ships will take you across the Blackwater, but some will go upriver. We have with us 10,000 soldiers from Volantis under the command of this Red Priestess. And on top of this, we have... Why is she here? Davos would interrupt. His anger has overtaken him. Yara would stop, puzzled. I told you that I would kill you if you came back this way. This woman burned at the stake, Princess Shireen Baratheon. A little girl. The heir to the Iron Throne. The Stormlanders around Davos would begin chattering. Theon and Yara would look at each other. Fossway and the Prince of Dorne would be confused. Even the bridge priestess would give Melisandre a curious look. Is this true, Melisandre? You did not tell the temple this. Melisandre would give a confident smile and walk towards Davos. Sir Davos, you know that I play a role here. And Shireen died for a reason. And here it is. I have brought with me Relor's warriors, here for the Great War. This was all made possible through Shireen's death and my exile. We sacrifice, and the Lord of Light provides. Davos would look to the bridge priestess. Are you capable of leading these soldiers? With a look of puzzlement, she would answer, I am capable. Davos would quickly pull out a dirk and throw it at Melisandre. It would land square in her skull. She would fall to the earth, dead. The Ironborn and the Red Soldiers would pull out their weapons. The Stormlanders would ready theirs. The bridge priestess would screech, How dare you! 
The Lord of Light will destroy you. Easy, easy, Gendry would yell. We are Lord of Light followers as well. There's no need for conflict. We are united behind Daenerys, Azor Ahai reborn. The Prince of Dorne would then yell, We don't follow your demon god. Daenerys burnt Randall Tarly and his heir, Fossaway would yell. There is yelling and scuffles and things look to be escalating, when suddenly they hear thunder. A gust of wind passes over the forces. The men look to the horizon and see dark clouds forming to the north. Yara then speaks. Get these men across the river. All of them. We then go back to Daenerys' march. Sansa is there, and she rides up to Samwell and Bran. The Vale reinforcements from Saltpans are now marching to the rear of the Dothraki and Unsullied. They are positioned well. Oh, Sam says, a bit oblivious. That is good. I am wondering, though. We have increased our pace, but we're still lagging too far behind, aren't we? What do you mean? asks Sansa. I would guess we're about a day from King's Landing, but the Army of the Dead should be arriving there well ahead of us. I'm concerned we'll be late in saving the city. Maybe Cersei's forces can hold them off until we arrive. We would be taking the Army of the Dead from both sides, and then they hear a dragon roar as Danny flies overhead on Drogon. Off, off into the distance she goes. Where is she going? Maybe she fancied a ride? Bran then mumbles something. He's skin-changing, but Sam can hear it. Burn them all, Bran says. Sam looks at Bran, thinking. Burn them all, Bran mumbles again. Something dawns on Sam, and he's suddenly overtaken by panic. He rides up to John quickly. John! John! It's Daenerys! She's going to kill everyone! What? What are you talking about? Bran has seen it! He said burn them all! King's Landing, it's, it's going to be incinerated. No, she'll be back. She's just... They look to the sky, but it's empty. Daenerys is nowhere to be seen. Now a bit concerned, Jon picks up the pace and rides to Tyrion and Grey Worm in the column. Where has our queen gone? Grey Worm looks at Jon coldly. To King's Landing. To end this war. Jon kicks into his horse hard and rides ahead at full speed. Wait, Jon, she has a strategy... Tyrion would say, but John is already gone. We then cut to Euron, slapping the hound awake on the deck of his ship. The hound is tied to the mast. Awaken, Euron says. Awaken. We have arrived. The hound is groggy. He looks up and sees the Red Keep. Euron's fleet is in Blackwater Bay. Now tell me, Euron asks, what did you see? If you wanted to know the fucking future, why didn't you drink that shit? The hound asks. They say too much shade of the evening causes madness, Euron says, before bursting into laughter. In an instant, he's deathly serious, pulling out a knife and digging the point into the hound's burns. What did you see? Blood begins dripping down the hound's face. Snow. It was snowing. Euron looks behind him. A storm is forming in the distance, the same one Yara saw. What else did you see? Did you see Daenerys? The knife goes deeper into the hound's face. Aye, she was there, lying in the snow, dead. She'd been stabbed. A smile comes to Euron's face. He pulls the knife away from the hound. Excellent, he says. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Perhaps your little faceless girl will change destiny after all. All we need to do is sit back in the bay and wait. What job would you like when I am king of Westeros? I have an opening for a fool. Bugger off. Euron smiles and looks at ease. He gazes out on the water, content. Captain, someone yells. Euron's face flashes to annoyed. The silence has been spotted. It's in the river, with the other half of the fleet. They are ferrying soldiers across the Blackwater. Euron's look then goes dark. I thought it was going to be a nice day. It's going to be a glorious one. Let's go murder my niece and nephew. We then cut to Cersei. She looks even worse than before, barely able to sit on the Iron Throne. She droops to one side and cuts herself on the chair. It shocks her into being alert. The mountain stands to one side of the throne. Kyburn enters. Kyburn, Cersei says. I called for you hours ago. I do not feel well. I fear my baby may be in peril. 
Oh, there is no need to worry, my dear queen. The poison I gave you has killed your unborn child by now. What? Cersei says in utter disbelief. I... Why? Kyburn smiles gently. I never did tell you the rest of my story of Volantis. As I said, I was part of a sellsword company. Its founder was a man named Oberyn Martell. In fact, my surname before I shed it for the Citadel was Fowler of Dorn. Oberyn and I grew very close. He shared my deep interest in poisons. Oberyn? He and I also had great plans for Dorne. But first, justice, he would always say. Sir Gregor, execute Lord Kyburn immediately. The mountain would march over to Kyburn and then stop. Oh, Sir Gregor is very much under my control. It's his punishment for his rape and murder of Oberyn's dear sister. Kyburn would lift his hand up and touch the mountain's helmet, almost in a caring fashion. He is in constant agony, mind you excruciating, but it doesn't stop him from doing everything I command. I never did anything to Elia, Cersei would gasp. No, you didn't. You were only a child. But Tywin loved you and your brother dearly, and anything he treasured, we needed to destroy. That is why I was in the Riverlands, you know, to find your brother. I am the one who paid Locke to take Sir Jamie's hand. Then I saved him, in part to ingratiate myself to your house, but mostly to let Tywin suffer the pain and embarrassment of having his golden boy crippled. Cersei falls from the Iron Throne to her knees. You're insane! It is too bad your father died so early. I am guessing that was the spider's meddling. I had many tortures planned for Tywin. But alas, they will go untested. Destroying you and House Lannister, though, that was almost too easy. You and the imp did most of the work yourself. That fiasco at Joffrey's wedding, the business with the High Sparrow. It's a wonder that you've survived this long. Soon the Dragon Queen will destroy the city and any last followers of House Lannister. Daenerys will then be easy to dispose of. Once her dragon is poisoned, she will lose all of her power. The maesters poison the beasts once. It's a simple enough thing to do it again. Then a new Dorne will rise to take control of Westeros. Cersei will run at Kyburn in a blind rage. The mountain will easily stop her. Then the doors of the throne room will open. Standing there will be Jaime Lannister. Jaime? Cersei ekes out in disbelief. Sir Gregor, Kyburn commands. The mountain heads for Jaime like a Goliath. He unsheaths his sword and swings. Jaime, in a fast blur, ducks and rolls gracefully. His dagger slices the side of the mountain. Black fluid with chunks in it begins pouring out the mountain's side. The mountain turns and slams his sword down, again missing Jamie as he dances aside. Is there gold and silver in the villages? Jamie would ask the mountain before stabbing him in a weak point in his armor. The mountain would be unfazed. Gems? Another stab. Nothing. Where is the Brotherhood? The mountain would swing and miss. Where is the Brotherhood? Jamie would spin behind the mountain and jump onto his back. The dagger would cross the mountain's throat. Blood would pour from the wound. Still, the mountain would stand. Where is the Brotherhood? Jamie would begin sawing through the neck with the blade. Where is the Brotherhood? Jamie would scream in Arya's voice. Where is the Brotherhood? The head comes free. The body still stands. Then, after a long moment, it teeters and falls. Jamie, drenched in black blood, would toss the head aside and march towards Kyburn and Cersei. Sir Jamie, Kyburn would say but a quick slash to the throat ends his life. Jamie, with his golden hand, strikes Cersei. She falls to the ground on her back. Jamie gets on top of her and pushes the golden hand into her throat. Cersei struggles and grips at Jamie's arm. She is dying. Cersei then reaches up and grabs Jamie's face and pulls off the mask, revealing Arya. The two women stare at each other, eye to eye. Cersei stops resisting. Then we get a quick flash of memory a split second of Lady Crane, on stage, weeping over her dead son. Arya stops. She stands up and marches out of the throne room. We then cut to Yara ferrying soldiers across the Blackwater. How many have we brought over? Yara would ask. Half of the Reachers, Theon would say. Perhaps a quarter of the Dornish and the Stormlanders. We need to go faster. My queen, someone would say. 
Yar would look and see that Euron's half of the Iron Fleet has entered the Blackwater River. Ironborn, prepare for battle. And in our last shot, we would have a view of the hills looking down on King's Landing. We can see the city and the river with Euron's fleet heading towards Yara's. Soldiers are scattered on both banks. Then we see a hoof. We pan up to see that a white walker has arrived. And how would I wrap up the entire series? Well, we'll see you next time with part six. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.